Hey guys, I'm super excited to be talking with you again. Today's episode is all about how to finally quit your nine to five job and I have a seven step plan to help you do it. So before we get into things, do be sure to like this video if you're excited about today's topic and subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube so you don't miss future videos. So let's dive in. Before turning my business into my one and only job, I worked in retail and I absolutely hated it. I had a boss who was really scary. Um, I was so bored sometimes in this job that I would go around straightening the coat hangers, making sure they all faced the same way. And I just felt like I was a million miles away from living the life, the kind of life that I really wanted to be living. I can remember a time um, back then when I was sat next to my then boyfriend. It was a Saturday night. We were watching Saturday night TV, eating takeaway, and I had my iPad on me and I was reading this blog post by a world traveling entrepreneur. And she had written about how she went from living in a trailer to starting her own business and um, taking it full time. And now she lived, well, at the time she lived in Costa Rica. And I remember tears coming to my face that I quickly like wiped away so that my then boyfriend couldn't see because this woman was living my life. <laughs> and that's, that's what it felt like at the time. I really felt like I wanted that kind of lifestyle and I felt really trapped. Of course, since then, um, I went on to quit my retail job. I took my business full time. I now run a six figure business and I've traveled a lot over the years and I'm really grateful for that. But I can, I can still remember to this day, the feeling of, you know, feeling trapped in my day job. And I know that many of you who are watching this today might feel the same way. You might be feeling trapped in your day jobs. So maybe like I was at the time, maybe you've been telling yourself you're gonna quit and you've been telling yourself that for so long. Maybe it's been months, maybe it's been years. You've been saying, I'm going to quit, I'm going to quit, I'm really going to go all in with my business and you still haven't done it. Or maybe you are so caught up in the what ifs that you're just paralyzed and you're just stuck in your job because you can't help thinking, what if I quit my day job and I do go all in with this business and it doesn't work and it tanks and it becomes the biggest mistake that I've ever made. I remember all of these kinds of questions running through my mind, which is why I know that they may be running through some of your minds. So that's why today I want us to go through a seven step plan to escaping your nine to five I know many of you in my community um, already have a side hustle, so you already have a business that you've set up and you would like to take it full time, but you're still at your day job. So I've made this video with you guys in mind. It's not really for creatives who have just got an idea and they want to turn that into a business. It's more for you if you already have the side hustle and you are ready and wanting to quit that day job of yours and go all in with this side hustle. But if you are a total beginner, um, you can still, you're welcome to still keep listening because I'm sure this will be a benefit to you as well. In fact, I know it will be. So let's jump into this seven step plan. Number one, address your fear of failure. So I mentioned this in the previous episodes of my podcast, in episode 34 and 35, but the one thing that will keep you in your day job, even when you know that you want out, is fear of failure. You might be thinking to yourself, what if this business fails and I can't pay my bills? I can't pay my rent on time. Um, what if nobody wants to hire me? What if I run out of savings? And there are two simple ways to beat this and not let this fear beat you. So the first way is a worst case scenario exercise. So what I want you to do is get a piece of paper or you can do this on your laptop if you want to and write down the worst, the absolute worst things that could possibly happen to you when you quit your day job. Um, I want you to write out what you think the worst case scenario would be. So for instance, it could be something like I can't pay my bills. 
then write out how you could somehow go about fixing that problem if it happened to you. So your answer might be something like downsize my apartment or flat as we say here in the UK. So I want you to write out every single one of your fears and what you'll do if they come true. And what you'll find is that your fears aren't actually as scary as you thought they were because you now know what you're going to do if those worst case scenarios come true. You've got an actual plan in front of you for things that you can do to combat those things. And when you realise that, they suddenly become way less scary. On to the second way to address this whole, you know, fear-based thinking, these these what ifs in your head of what if I fail. The second way to combat this is to simply reframe it. So each time you start thinking, what if I fail? Consciously make an effort to switch the thought to what if this is one of the best things that I have ever done? This question of what if I fail may be heavy on your mind right now and I totally get that because I remember thinking that way, but what if you don't fail and you wasted days, months, years worrying about something that never even happened? It's food for thought. That's what I always try and tell myself, even when it comes down to not just when I was quitting my job, but when I've had any kind of fear-based thinking around things or worries about my future and how something might go, I tried to catch myself in that moment and think, stop, you're worrying about something that hasn't even happened yet and may not happen at all. So step two of this seven step plan is to cut down on your expenses, any kind of expense that you can. So I'm talking about the Starbucks coffees, I'm talking about downsizing where you live maybe, um, maybe you could stop shopping so much if that's a vice of yours. Maybe you could stop paying for a car on finance and buy a used car outright. Just do whatever you can to minimise the financial stress so that when you do quit your day job, you're not freaking out about money because you have so many things to pay for. Um, it really does help if you just try and cut back on those expenses. I've said it before, but when you quit, you really want to enjoy going all in on your business. It was honestly one of the most fun and exciting journeys that I've been on in my life so far. And it would be a real shame to miss out on all of that fun and excitement if you're panicking so much about money and about your financial security. So make the process just a little bit easier on yourself by cutting down on any unnecessary expenses. And the way that you do this is really simple. You just print out your bank statement for each account that you have, if you have like more than one, and just go through the statement with a highlighter, highlight every expense that you think you could cut out and then do it on the same day, just get it done, get it over with. And I promise you it will give you a little bit more security when the time comes to quit that job. Number three in this plan is to save three to six months of living expenses. And note that I said that you're not saving three to six months of your wages, just your living expenses. Um, this is also why it might really help you if you cut back on those unnecessary expenses that we just spoke about, because you can put the money that you've saved from those expenses into a savings account. And any money that you make from your business now, while you're in your day job, it's also really wise to put that also in the same savings account and aim for, like I said, like three to six months of living expenses. Um, I'm not, to be totally honest, I'm not a fan of leaping blindly into a business um, without having savings to kind of fall back on. Because even though you've already started your business and you may already have clients and you may, your business may already be making money, it's wise not to get too confident. It never hurts to have savings in the bank just in case. And like I said, when it comes to quitting your job, it'll make you feel, feel a lot more secure and it will you know, prevent you from taking like risks and making decisions out of a panicky uh, mindset. Panicking about finances, that is. 
So step four in this plan is where we get down to the nitty gritty stuff. And it's all about reevaluating your business foundations. So you may have these things in place already, but I think that it's really important to reevaluate them before you quit that job and you go all in on your business because you wanna make sure you know, building a business is kind of like building a house and you want to make sure that you build your house on a steady foundation. So think about things like who your ideal client is, really get clear on who that person is, how they talk, what their problems and struggles are. So you can talk like them, you can use the words that they resonate with and your messaging will, you know, get across to them in a much better way. Also think about what your niche is. And if you don't have one, find one. Because when you try and speak to everybody, you speak to nobody. And it means that nobody lands on your website and thinks, oh my goodness, this girl gets me. It's like she is in my head. You know, you want people to have that kind of connection and reaction to you in your work and really feel like you understand them and you are the person that they want to hire. And they're not going to be convinced of that if you're trying to do a million different things, you know, like you're trying to sell photography and website design and copywriting and just all of these, you know, this variety of services that don't mesh well together maybe. It's really important to create um, an instant connection with your ideal clients, especially if you're going to convince them to pay you hundreds or thousands of their hard earned cash. So comment below, actually, I'm really curious to know, do you have a niche or not? Um, yes or no. And if you do, go ahead and tell me what that niche is, because I always find it so fascinating to read you guys' niches. That was a very weird sentence to say. <laughs> but um, I've talked to a couple of people on Instagram recently who've got amazing niches. And I was just like, yes, that is so specific. I love it so much. And don't be afraid as well to choose a niche because it doesn't mean that you are stuck in this box forever. I mean, for me, when I first started out, my niche was my style because I started out as a graphic designer and I was like, I had like a very childlike, childish sort of girly style. So that was my niche. It was very specific. And then when I went on to teaching and selling courses, my niche initially was designers only. So I was only teaching freelance web and graphic designers. And over time, I've built up a community of tens of thousands across different platforms between my email list and Instagram and Pinterest and all these different places. So now I can branch out. But when you are at the beginning stages of taking your business full time, it really helps if you can choose a niche. Because your ideal client has so much choice when you're in an industry, when you are in an industry of millions of other people, other creatives who are selling the exact same thing. So picking a niche is a really easy way to stand out. Um, still on this point of like your business foundations and really making sure that they are solid, you're going to want to reevaluate your packaging and pricing and try and focus if you can on creating a monthly recurring revenue stream because this will give you some kind of financial security because you'll know with a monthly recurring revenue stream, you'll know that you've got a certain amount of money coming in every single month that you can rely on. And I know that it's a lot easier for certain people in certain industries to do, like for instance, social media managers, they definitely can create monthly recurring revenue streams quite easily because their clients need them every month. Whereas if you're in a different industry like web design, you might be finding that a bit trickier, but it's still totally doable. It's doable in every single industry. Like if you are a web designer, you could create a monthly website maintenance package. Or if you're a graphic designer, it could be something like um, a monthly social media and blog graphic creation package so that your clients, every time they're creating, you know, um, social media posts and blog posts, they don't have to make all of those graphics themselves. Still onto your foundations, you're going to want a one year income goal and an income plan and try and break it down as well into like a six month plan because I think that makes it more um, less daunting and just more attainable for you. Not attainable, what's the word? 
just like easier to think about if you're not thinking of the whole year ahead and just the next six months. You're going to want to take a look and review your messaging because too many business owners, too many creatives make their messaging all about their service and the ins and outs of their packages and not so much about the transformation. And that's what it's all about because at the end of the day, your clients only care about the transformation the transformation that you can provide them with. So your messaging needs to be centered around that transformation, not centered around, you know, the ins and outs of your package, listing everything that you've given them, um, listing your experience and your degree and all of these kinds of things. You can include them somewhere like on your about page or something, but it shouldn't be what your messaging is always about. And then you're going to want to review your tagline and your elevator pitch to make sure that it is so clear that even a caveman could understand. (laughs) And lastly, review your website. So is your website easy? Does it make it easy for your clients to hire you? Or are you making your clients jump through hoops? And also, can people clearly see a photo of you on your website? You know, can people see who it is behind the work behind the portfolio. I have never once hired anyone who has hidden their face from their website or their social media, like not a single time, because I don't know why, but it makes it makes me feel like they are hiding something or it makes me feel like they're a bit shady. Um, and I think what it is, is it just puts a wall between you and the potential client. And that's not what people want. People want to hire other humans, like people hire people. And if you are hiding yourself from your potential clients, it kind of sparks a bit of a red flag in their minds. And I think when it comes between choosing between them looking at two different people's websites and choosing to reach out to one or the other, they're most likely going to go with the one who they can clearly see and already like build some kind of a, of a trust with over the one who feels like they're hiding. So step five of this plan is to create and implement a consistent marketing plan. And make sure that you build it around marketing that you actually enjoy (laughs) because you don't have to do absolutely everything that you see other people doing you don't have to be on tiktok you don't have to be creating your own facebook group if you don't want to just kind of steer clear of the the shoulds of the business world and steer clear of doing things because other people are doing them and do the marketing that feels good to you so one thing that i would recommend doing in this part of the process is creating a unique to you marketing calendar of things that you are going to do each day, week and month um, to find clients and to grow your audience. You want consistent clients, right? Because obviously you want consistent income and you wanna keep your business alive, but you cannot expect consistent clients if you're not marketing consistently. So that is why I think it's really important to create that marketing calendar for yourself. And when I say consistently, you don't have to be marketing like nonstop consistently every day for the rest of the year, even when you don't feel like it. Like it's, it's, it's not like we are aiming for perfection here. We're not aiming for perfection. Anybody who follows me knows that sometimes I take breaks from my podcast and sometimes I take breaks from Instagram and that's okay. I think that it's really human and really normal to take breaks, but try to be as consistent as you can. Consistent doesn't mean perfect. So you don't have to like do something consistently so perfectly that you never take a break. That's what I wanted to really like hone in on on this point because I've had this conversation with a couple of creatives recently about what consistency means to them and the pressures that they, that they feel to never miss a day of insert here insert marketing tactic here like never miss a day of live streaming for instance um, and that's not really the case if you just aim to be as consistent as possible then that will work 
things that I personally would advise to go in a marketing plan because I know that there's going to be someone or a few people who will reach out to me and say, you know, I know you said to like customize my marketing to me, but I just don't even know where to begin. And I totally get that because I remember feeling the same way. <laughs> so things that I would honestly recommend would be picking one social media platform and spending one hour a day each day connecting and by that I do not mean using a cookie cutter script that you've like picked up from someone's course and sending that DMing that to a bunch of strangers on Instagram hoping that one of them will hire you because that doesn't really work and the problem with that is when you use a script like that and you send it to a bunch of strangers Everyone is using the same script as you, if this is like a popular course, um, to pitch people in their DMs. Like everyone is using that script. Like to, for instance, today I have received um, a DM that's exactly the same as the one that I received a couple of weeks back. Um, in fact, I keep receiving the same one over and over again and I just delete it. I just don't even reply. I know that might be a little bit harsh, but I just think, this kind of marketing doesn't really work. Like a social media platform is called social media because we're meant to be social and we're meant to be connecting with each other on there and being our authentic selves. So spend an hour a day if you can, not forever, but because you don't need to do this forever, but just to like get your business going and building momentum so that you can quit your day job. Um, connecting on social media with people in your own industry and connecting with potential clients, just replying to their Instagram stories and commenting on their posts and starting a conversation the way that you would if you were to walk up to someone in the street and try and make friends with them. That's kind of more like the sort of connecting and networking that works on social media. It doesn't like, it most likely won't bring you immediate results but the great thing about it is that over time like I said before it builds momentum and then you'll suddenly start seeing tons of results plus you'll build an audience for yourself which is always really great because I'm not a fan of encouraging people when they first when they quit their day jobs to like sort of go onto freelancing websites um and make their whole business about that because I mean you can I do think that that's a really great way to get clients initially when you're just starting out but I really would encourage you to try and build a personal brand because when you build a personal brand um, it means that over the years even if you change your services you still have a loyal audience of people who will buy from you so that's why I think that it's really important to sort of get networking and connecting on social media, grow that audience. Another thing you could do is content marketing, which again is not like a quick and fast way to get clients, but it is an amazing way um, to just like build no like and trust with your audience. And it's a really great long-term strategy. So those are the two things I would add to my content sorry my marketing calendar if I were creating one right now and I was still in a day job and getting ready to sort of quit that day job step six in this seven step process would be to master the art of selling confidently and authentically so I want you to go ahead and comment below tell me how you feel about selling because I know that many of you um watching this many of you are introverts just like me I in fact I I surveyed my audience the other day and it was something crazy like 81% of you are introverts so from one introvert to another I know that many of you may be thinking selling is sleazy selling makes me feel so nervous I just hate it it makes me feel icky the problem is if you think that selling is sleazy, you won't sell much of anything. And you probably think selling is sleazy. You probably picked up that belief about selling because you've seen sleazy marketing and you've seen, you know, like 
the people being sleazy in your DMs and car salespeople and all of this kind of, of selling that just like makes you feel ugh, just icky. Um, but you don't have to sell like them. You can be just a human trying to sell to other humans. Like if you just be yourself and be you, bring your personality into your business and your marketing, you'll find that even when you are quote unquote selling, um, people will be okay with it. Like it will feel normal. It will feel fine. It will feel natural because you're treating them and you're talking to them like a human being and not like some marketing machine that is just after their money. Like I said, I think I've said it before in this video, but I'll definitely say it again. People like to buy from people. You know, this is why we enjoy when we go to that one particular coffee shop and we have that barista who always asks how our day is. This is why we like going to those places and we will always frequent those coffee shops because, you know, we enjoy being treated like a person, like a real person and not just a number or like a wallet that they can take money from is what I'm trying to say. So final step, step number seven is to make a work-life balance plan for when you quit your day job. You definitely don't want to quit your soul-sucking day job and create a soul-sucking business. And the sad reality is that I see too many creatives getting caught in that trap and I kind of got caught in that trap myself. Um, so get clear instead on the kind of work schedule that you want when, you, when you've quit your day job, like the kind of hours you want to be working and get really clear on the definition of success, on your definition, because it can be so vastly different to all of us because we're all unique human beings. And success to one person is not success to another. So try and like find your definition by asking yourself, why do I want to quit my day job in the first place? Why did I start this business in the first place? It could be that you want to travel the world. So if that's the case, print out a photo of you on your favourite trip. Um, for me, this would be, a it was a photo of me on a swing in Bali because it was my first solo trip and one of my favourite trips of all time. So print out a photo of you travelling, stick it up somewhere, you can see it every time you get your laptop or whatever it is that you work on out to work on your business. And, you know, if it's not travel, it could be your kids. Get a photo of your kids and stick it up. And this way, every time you work on your business, you're reminded of your why. You're reminded of your reason for quitting your job in the first place. And this will help you to focus on your why instead of being sucked into the workaholic wormhole. So I hope that you have enjoyed this episode. I know there was a lot of points that we went through. Maybe it might be worthwhile going back through this episode again when you have some more time and just like getting a notebook and pen and writing down your favorite points. Um, but yeah, I really hope that you've enjoyed this. And if you found this episode helpful, then please do take a screenshot and share it on your Instagram story tagging me so that I can say thanks and just connect with you over there. So. Thank you guys for listening once again and I will see you this time next week.